five, it's the end of regulation between Race FC and Conrad and Beasley United. We are tied at three apiece on field five, going in to the target square time. The target square will be four. The next square wins. Exciting games going on on field four and five on field four. Hashtag United and Natty SC tied at three. Next goal wins on field five. It's Gracie FC and Conrad and Beasley United tied at three. With next goal wins. And an update from field four is a hashtag United goal. Hashtag United defeats Daddy SC. Four to three. Hashtag United is only six wins away from walking away with one million dollars.
and we are just minutes away from kickoff on field three where Charlotte FC will take on NCFC in a group H matchup kickoff scheduled for 1.45 p.m. Coming up next on Field 4, fans, a Group H matchup, or excuse me, a Group G matchup as Sneaky Fox will take on Zelma FFF. Kickoff is set for 2 p.m. take on Gracie FC on field four at 8.30 p.m. tonight in a Group F matchup. Again, that's Gracie FC versus Natty FC, field four tonight, 8.30 p.m. scheduled kickoff. In fans, Hashtag United will take on Conrad and Beasley United on field three at 8.15 tonight. Once again, field three, Conrad and Beasley United taking on Hashtag United in a group up matchup. Kickoff is scheduled for 8.15 p.m. Our TST coverage, the soccer tournament, continues from Wake Med Soccer Park in Cary, North Carolina. Dean Linky, delighted to be with you for this all-important matchup in Group H, Charlotte FC and North Carolina FC, a group that also includes the Duke Sevens and the Raleigh Rebels FC, and a lot of crossover in this game between Charlotte FC and North Carolina FC. I'm proud to be the only voice for the North Carolina FC going back to the days of the Carolina Railhawks in 2007. And, of course, Charlotte FC now an MLS franchise coming out of Group H. As you take a look at some of the results we've seen already, Hoosier Army getting a big win over Dortmund, Kingdom FC also getting a win. The Lita getting a win as well as Blade and Grass. You see SLC FC with that exciting win as well. Far East United getting a win, but all eyes are now on the local team, the home team here, North Carolina FC, this is their home stadium. They started in 2007 as the Carolina Railhawks. They made a change several years back when Steve Malik brought the team to North Carolina FC, aligning with the local youth program as it truly is a great youth to academy to pro system. Charlotte FC, they won the battle for getting an MLS team as it kind of came down by many standards to Charlotte and Raleigh. And, of course, Charlotte has had incredible support for their MLS team, and they are represented here today. And they're led by a former Duke star who actually, by the way, played for the Carolina Railhawks for two years before he went on to an amazing eight-year career with the New England Revolution and one bonus year in the NASL with the New York Cosmos. Darius Barnes started Duke. Played with a lot of these players for a couple years on the Carolina Railhawks before making the jump up to MLS. So it's interesting seeing him wear the Charlotte uniform and serve as the player coach as he'll be going against some people that he actually played with, believe it or not. As we switch it over, it's the ageless wonder, Capono Lowe, that we're looking for, wearing number three as Capono Lowe is 44 years old. And that is not Capono Lowe, but... Nonetheless, Capono Lowe scored the first ever goal for NCFC in 2007. We'll find him here in a second for you. 
as North Carolina FC, coached by Dewan Bader. You see Corey Leno, Lenio, Connor Tobin over there. Elizondo came from Costa Rica. There he is, Capono Lowe. Scored the first ever goal for the Carolina Railhawks in 2007. We called it the left-footed thunder, and he went into the crowd, and at 44 years young, he's still looking good. He's one of three captains for this franchise that are on the team. Nasby Abadawi, you can see right there laughing, and Austin Deleuze. And we expect to see all three of those. There's the human highlight reel with the phone, T. Shipalani who had fame for the slice and dice step overs. We'll see if he still has that in his arsenal. This will be so much fun for me, folks, as I'm overjoyed as Capone Lowe already acting like he's got a little bit of an injury. NCFC and Charlotte FC is part of TST. It is truly hard to top it as we get ready to roll here. We will confirm the referee for this game. As what a day it's been as it's going to be Megan Mullen, who we just saw, and she'll be assisted by Alyssa Nichols, who has already called a game. And the NCFC team, going back to their throwback orange, which was part of the original Carolina Railhawks, they were all orange before the switch to North Carolina FC. And with all of these players pretty much representing the Carolina Railhawks before switching over, like Austin Deleuze played for both. Stephen Miller, Miller time, played for both. Austin Deleuze, Wake Forest all-time assist leader and a fan favorite, my former broadcast partner for North Carolina FC before he had a couple beautiful kids with Katie. There's Nick Platter, longtime member of the coaching staff, assistant GM. There's Christian Ibiaga, who also played at Duke. And as Darius Barnes, the player coach for Charlotte FC on the other side. I got to tell you, folks, it doesn't get any better for me than being a part of this TST and having this game right here. And it's so cool how the TST leaders grouped Charlotte FC along with North Carolina FC, John Kerr's Duke Sevens, and then the Raleigh Rebels FC, which also have several former North Carolina FC players on their team. And it's pretty cool to see the North Carolina FC team in their throwback orange, the original Carolina Railhawks. And here's Stephen Miller. Miller, who started Colgate, he's in the Colgate Hall of Fame. And Capono Lowe, who was just an automatic right in at left back for so many years with the Railhawks. At 44 years old, he gets the start along with Austin Deleuze. And when Nazbi Abadawi gets on there, that's three former captains. Featuring for Dewan Bader and this North Carolina FC team. Dewan Bader, a longtime assistant coach and a longtime NCFC youth coach. NCFC youth led by Gary Butte, the fine CEO who has really gone hand in hand with Steve Malik and Kurt Johnson and Francie and the gang for North Carolina FC. It'll be a corner kick for Charlotte FC. Charlotte FC's got a good chance here early, and there's Nick Platter. Nick Platter getting it done. Nick Platter. University of Cal Davis. A lot of people know him for his time with Minnesota Thunder, but he was with the Railhawks in 2010, 12, and 14, and then joined the Railhawks front office and just recently left a couple years ago. Now is a big-time real estate tycoon in the area, taken away by Charlotte FC and played back. It'd be interesting to see is Nick Platter if he's going to play the whole game or they also have another good goalkeeper in Joseph Goodwin who played at North Carolina. Perhaps we'll see each of them. And hopefully we don't have to see what we did where Chris Wondolowski for Team Dempsey was forced into playing goalkeeper and a key part with a hat trick and some big time saves. I mean, just so much fun. So much fun, and everybody having a good time and soaking it in. This is just really cool. The TST coming to you on YouTube and or Peacock. So glad you're with us. As there's eight groups of four, top two teams will advance. Tomorrow afternoon, they'll start the knockout round leading up to Sunday's championship game. So it'll be a kick in for Ibiaga. As Ibiaga will send it over to Capono Low. 
And this one will go over. Making a run there was Ryan Ackley. Team Dempsey defeated Jackson Boom by four. Ackley could have easily played for the Hoosier Army team as well. That we'll see later this afternoon over on field four. Miller tracks back, finds Ibiaga. Charlotte FC. Want to say hello to another crossover from the Carolina Railhawks days to now a big time member of the Charlotte FC staff, David Vaught. Started as an intern here and now is part of the legal counsel for Charlotte FC. A great story as that one is knocked away. <laughs> Alex Marino getting the start in goal for Charlotte FC. Darius Barnes wearing number five. Anthony Wordsworth, number eight. Patrick Thompson, number 10. Adam Brundle, number nine. Sean Berry, number 19. Getting the start. It'll be a corner kick for North Carolina FC. Charlotte FC pinging around. Abadawi! Nasby Abadawi. Cranking it right there. Abadawi, who made it to MLS with Cincinnati. Good defense. And the North Carolina FC team. Dangerous. There's Cesar Elizondo, who, by way of Costa Rica, made a mark in a little shorter time for the Carolina Railhawks, now known as North Carolina FC. Charlotte FC. That's Adam Brundle on the ball. Charlotte FC also features another member of the Charlotte FC staff, Dustin Swinehart. I called his games when he won a championship for USL at the lower level with Cleveland and Martin Rennie, who eventually became the coach of the then-named Railhawks after I saw him in that game. And the next thing you know, Martin Rennie is the head coach for North Carolina FC after really good job with Scott Schweitzer leading the charge. He did great. He's still in the area doing great stuff with next level. As we are six minutes into the game. Lots to talk about in this one. Off the head of Ibiaga. Trying to run it down is Sean Barry. Nick Platter has got to get on his horse. CFC Cesar Elizondo plays it back and it's going to go out of bounds as Miller Brian Shriver right can't get to it Shriver and Schuler as Nick Platter makes another big save Nick Platter looking good as he denies Charlotte FC it'll be a corner kick for Charlotte FC good shot coming from Charlotte FC that was number nine Adam Brundle so corner kick for Charlotte FC. The added drama for people closer to home is Raleigh's group and Charlotte's group kind of both at the same time, won an MLS team, and Charlotte got it. But to Steve Malik's credit, they really settled in with the NWSL's North Carolina Courage and then at USL League One, John Bradford and North Carolina FC, top of the table. So making the right moves with this youth to pro setup. Again, spearheaded by NCFC youth all the way up to the top of the table with the pro team. Starting in 2007, the different leagues, USL and formerly NASL, and then back into the USL for North Carolina FC. Coming into the game is Schuler, who is back in Chapel Hill where he graduated from. He's now a chiropractor in town. Charlotte, that's a good little dummy. This is dangerous. Platter's got the near post and it leaves it wide open. And Charlotte FC has scored first. They're on the board as Scott Larrabee has made it 1-0 Charlotte FC. Charlotte FC pulling Platter out and the gold wide open. And Nick Platter, he's in his 40s. And he's been busy 
So Scott Larrabee, who played for Georgetown from 2006 to 2009, Georgetown has had some success here at Wake Med Soccer Park. They made a deep run during that COVID NCAA tournament that was held here where I was doing the same thing, calling game after game after game and loving every second of it, and a shot from distance there from North Carolina FC, not on target. So Larrabee has made it 1-0 Charlotte FC. The matchup continues. Reminding you that it is a set target score. So after 40 minutes, the game is not over. What they'll do is do a plus one to the team that is winning, or if it's tied, the first team that scores wins the game. And it has added so much fun to this atmosphere. I mean, so much fun that you, you're not even – there's a little bit of rain out there, a little bit of sprinkles, nobody's sweating it because it's just – Everybody's having a good time. Miller trying to get to it. Miller, can he hang on to it as it's knocked away? Good work by the Charlotte FC goalkeeper as Alex Marino gets over there to take care of it. Miller. Quite a few times we would... We're not too original. We would belt out the Miller time goal <laughs> as it's dropped over here. Nasby Abadawi, Nasby Abadawi, so close, just missing. Nasby Abadawi, as he's going to check out, they'll make a change. Abadawi, I think, now has a couple kids with his beautiful wife. As I mentioned, he made it to the MLS, which was his dream. He played for his country's national team, but he just felt right at home here. I mean, his story's incredible. As this one will run a little bit away from Brian Ackley. Was cut kind of from his club team and then finally made it. Nobody wanted him in college. Went to a community college and found his way to NC State. And By the time he left, he was... All ACC. After that, still nobody wanted him. Nobody took him. North Carolina FC took him. He became a fan favorite and then got the call up to Cincinnati for MLS. And after playing a little bit, just had the desire to come back home to carry North Carolina as an injured player down for Charlotte FC. Looks like a card may have been given. Confirm that. Okay, no card. So there's only the official lifting up her hand with the whistle. No card. One zero. And with the injury making his way off at the moment is the goal scorer, Scott Larrabee. It'll be a corner kick. Charlotte FC, nice crowd here for this Darby. This whole group is Darby Town. 12 minutes in, 1-0. Headed away by North Carolina FC. It's going to go out of bounds and running it down for Charlotte FC is number seven, Luke Williams. You see the scores up top on the other games, five fields, and now we are starting to get a little bit of weather. As Austin Deleuze is back in there, Austin Deleuze knows as well as anybody weather. I think that's one of the reasons why he stepped away from the broadcast booth. Too many games with like five hour delays because of Jorge Acuna's weather service. And now you can really see the rain. 13 minutes in, Charlotte FC 1, North Carolina FC 0. Ackley trying to put some pressure. Williams back across, and there's Platter. Platter will keep an eye if he's going to do one half for the entire game. As Goodwin is available. Two really good goalkeepers. And there's Austin Deleuze. Austin Deleuze, like Capono Low. 
Started to get a little bit of that Ponce de Leon as he continued to be great like a fine wine during this time with North Carolina FC. And as I say that, he miss hits that one <laughs> and out of bounds. His dad, Tony Deleuze, the longtime coach for the Wake Forest women's soccer team, which is pretty much a write-in for the NCAA tournament. And it's been really good. Produced a lot of big-time players that are now playing in the NWSL. Great family, the Deleuze family. Out of the back. T. Shipalani, the human highlight reel during his time with the then named Railhawks. Step over after step over. Played back in quickly here. Moses McKinday went to NC State. Just had a very short stint. I barely even remember it. Here's Shipalani. Shipalani, there's one step over. Just a little bit slower than it used to be. And touch back to NCFC is trying to get to it was Michael Palacio. Played back around 2012. And this will now find the feet of Graham Smith. Graham Smith also kind of a silent assassin and was loved here. He could have easily kept on playing, but entered the business world very much and successful. And fans on field four post-soccer career for Graham Smith. 13 minutes in. Now weather part of the story. If you're just joining us, this is the Group H with all four North Carolina teams. Charlotte FC, the Duke Sevens, led by John Kerr Jr. North Carolina FC, led by Dewan Bader and the Raleigh Rebels FC, which also consists of a couple former North Carolina FC players. That'll be an interesting game for sure. Trying to build it out of the back. Kinde plays it up top. Elizondo. He still looks to be in pretty good form wearing the double eights. Good ball from Platter, center of the field. And they'll get it out wide to Shipolani. Shipolani, let's see. Any step overs? One. He cuts it back and they'll knock it out. <laughs> Shipolani. Everybody loves Shipolani. Good play there by Jimmy Nealis. Elizondo. And Smith Warren, a corner kick. Corner kick, North Carolina FC still looking for their first goal of the game. Elizondo, oh my, that was a good left-footed strike as absolutely frozen right there was Marino. Nothing he was going to be able to do, but just off target. Cleanly taken away by North Carolina FC. They trail 1-0. Larrabee with the goal for Charlotte FC. It's going to roll out of bounds. McKinde. Gets it back to Smith. Pushing forward here. As that was Schuler. Looks like Schuler's already got a band aid to his face. And I'm telling you, he did not have that on before the game when I was down on the sideline bench area, spending time with both teams. Good to see Darius Barnes again. Driver dancing, Elizondo, who had that great shot that just missed. Elizondo looks to be in really good form. See field one. Everybody thrilled to have the Red Dragons from Wrexham, who will play Chelsea in a few weeks in Chapel Hill. Here's Smith, full team that is, and Smith earning another corner kick. Smith played in, and it's going to go out of bounds. In the 16th minute, in the first half, on field three, it is Charlotte FC 1, NCFC 0. You can hear the PA announcer in the background getting everybody updated on this field three score. North Carolina FC 
This is their home park, home stadium right behind us. On this field, actually, they beat the LA Galaxy in the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup with Landon Donovan on the field. And that was a run there where North Carolina FC beat the LA Galaxy two or three times in the Open Cup. And it got to a point where Bruce Arena wasn't showing up. The fans would have milk boxes with where's Bruce on the side of it. This one sent back across, and it'll be in the hands of Marino. Capono low. As blowing right by Capono low that time is Jimmy Nealis. Scott Larrabee, the Georgetown player with the only goal in this game. It's 1-0. Still looking for the blonde hair of Dustin Swinehart to make an appearance. Jimmy Nealis also played at Georgetown. Part of a Big time name with big time players. Spent time with the Long Island Rough Riders and the New York Cosmos. Did Neelis. And it looks like several changes getting ready to be made for North Carolina FC and Dewan Bader. As we work our way to minute 18. Shot from distance. So right now it's only Scott Larrabee. The former George San Hoya who got one by that man there. Nick Platter. The only goal of the game. A little bit too far out in front. At that time of Brian Ackley. Ackley. Pretty sure Ackley is still down in the UNC Wilmington area where Dewan Bader will be taking his talents as Wilmington looks to re-enter into USL, I believe at the League One level. Could be USL Championship. Viaga. A little bit too far for Schuler. Good crowd as you would expect to see these two teams go at it. Barnes was in great form before the game. Really a delight to talk to, and obviously he was excited to connect with a lot of his former teammates as he represents Charlotte FC. Had a really good MLS career, did Barnes, after a fine career for the Duke Blue Devils for Charlotte FC. Here's Ibiaga. Ibiaga. Another former Duke Blue Devil, and we played the first 20. And it's Charlotte FC 1, North Carolina FC 0. North Carolina FC in collaboration with TST, kind of serving as your host team. And through one, it's Charlotte FC 1, North Carolina FC 0. We'll be back for the second half from Field 3 at Wakeman Soccer Park in Cary. It's the TST. Seventh minute, we are zero zero. And upcoming fans on field five. With kickoff set for 2.15 p.m., it's the Raleigh Rebels FC taking on the Duke Seven. In a Group H matchup, again, that is Field 5. Kickoff is set for 2.15 p.m.
Fans on field one inside the stadium. Como 1907 leads Wrexham Red Dragons one to nothing. Zala FFF, we are 0-0 zero, zero in the 10th minute. And don't forget fans warming up now on field five in a group H matchup. It's the Duke Sevens taking on Raleigh Rebels. Kickoff is scheduled for 2.15 p.m. Halftime of a truly high-profile game as part of the TST, the first ever. In 2020, TBT fans and soccer players Mike Volk and that man right there, Henry Tembin, reached out to TBT founder John Mugar and suggested applying TBT's high stakes open to all model to soccer. Together with Aleko Eskandarian, a little push from Clint Dempsey and TBT co-founder Dan Friel, they agreed that a 7v7 world championship would be unparalleled in its intensity competitiveness and skill level and they have made it happen as we are two minutes away from starting the second half North Carolina FC ostensibly in collaboration with Henry Timbin that was not him by the way but he is here and he is really glued in on this game And they'll play it back. Charlotte FC with a 1-0 lead as we start the second half. Charlotte FC in their Charlotte Blues. North Carolina FC in their old school Carolina Railhawks Orange. 
This is the Costa Rican, Cesar Elizondo. As we'll see what Miller can do. Austin Deleuze back in there calling for it. And Elizondo gets knocked out of bounds for a corner kick. Deleuze is open. And now they'll give it to Deleuze. Deleuze has it. He wanted it earlier. And Deleuze will switch the point of attack as they'll find McKinday. McKinday, good turn, chance. And Nazbi Abadawi almost falling over as he takes that shot. Nazbi Abadawi does well to stay with it. And Nazbi Abadawi has been dangerous. He's been really close. Elizondo's also been close. But the second half underway, and it's still just a 1-0 lead with, remember, we've got target score. So after 40 minutes, we'll add one goal to who's ever leading, and that's the target to win the game. And it's been fascinating. After five minutes, they pull players off, and... Two games ago, we saw the team from Canada beat Nacoxa with 5v5, and then with Chris Wondolowski for Team Dempsey, 6v6, and he had to come in as goalkeeper. He scored a hat trick, including his third goal wearing the goalkeeper gloves after a penalty kick. Just amazing drama here. This one is intriguing because there's a lot of crossover, including Darius Barnes who's in the bottom left-hand corner of your YouTube screen and on the ball now. He is the player coach. And he had a couple years with the, the name Carolina Railhawks before a big, long run in MLS. Super successful. Great student. Most of them are coming from Duke. Barnes. Off the head of a fellow Duke player, Christian Ibiaga. Sent back in again. Austin Deleuze. And it's going to go out of bounds as Ackley was trying to get there. Ackley's still got some game. Barnes has looked really good. Nice, smart passes. That one picked off that time by Schreiber, who pretty much was attacking player or a winger, for the most part, has been playing in the back in this game. Ackley will drop it back. Finds Capono low. Elizondo. Schreiber making a far post run. They haven't found him yet. Ackley now a near post run from Schreiber. Back to Elizondo. Elizondo dancing with it. Knocked away there. Great defense from Charlotte FC. They have a 1-0 lead. Counter. And Nick Platter has stayed in as the goalie. Barnes and after a little bit of rain looks like the sun's starting to come out Ackley will build it out of the back to T. Shipolani. Shipolani's going to take a shot oh my that one had eyes for T. Shipolani. T. Shipolani as a Charlotte FC player is down As you might expect, a lot of these people dusting off the boots, getting banged around a little bit. That's Adam Brundle. Adam Brundo played at Delta State and then finished up at Winthrop. He's been pretty good today. And he'll have to come out as the trainer came out. Keep an eye on the bottom of your YouTube, YouTube slash Peacock screen for the schedule. And periodically at the top of the screen, we'll update you with scores. The social media team for TST is killing it. It's doing amazing work. So check them out on all the appropriate social media channels as well. That'll go off of Shipolani and come back to Charlotte FC as they will not be in a hurry with a 1-0 lead. Again, it doesn't matter, though. With TST, you just saw Anson Dorrance, the longtime head coach. He may be with Damon Nahas, who was the assistant coach for the original 
first three years of the Carolina Railhawks as he assisted his longtime friend Scotty Schweitzer, two former NC State stars, Damon Nahas now the right-hand man to Anson Dorrance with the UNC women's team. Anson Dorrance arguably the most successful college coach, men or women, with his 20-plus national championships for the Tar Heels women's team. Shipolani trying to dance with it. Shipolani, Shipolani! And goes near post with it, hoping for a spill there with Shriver, but no spill. Shriver, Shriver, oh, lucky off the post. And a penalty kick as Shriver goes down. So Brian Shriver wearing number 21 was lurking, made a far post run, then a near post run, stayed there. And Ho earned the penalty with Barnes talking to him. It looks like Shriver may want to take this despite being banged up just a little bit. And Barnes is talking a little trash to Shriver. I think they crossed over during the Carolina Railhawks slash North Carolina FC. Again, it originally started as the Railhawks and then changed their name to North Carolina FC. Shriver to tie it. And how about North Carolina FC? We're tied at ones. Brian Shriver in the house scored a lot of big-time goals for North Carolina FC. A former Tar Heel has stayed in the area. And gets it done. Charlotte comes right back, though, looking to take the lead, and it's cleared off the line. Remember that save by Smith off the line to keep it at ones, as we got a good one here. Dewan Bader assisted by another legend from NC State, Henry Gutierrez, one of the all-time greats to come out of NC State. Played with Kirk Johnson, who heads up soccer operations. And, of course, Kirk Johnson won an MLS Cup and a U.S. Open Cup during his time leading the Kansas City team and has brought all of his abilities for a long time now. Kurt's a little bit like me. Like, the years start to run together. You don't know exactly how many they are. But I know he is listening in and was part of those great teams back in 1990 that made it to the College Cup, NC State. Charlotte FC back across again. Brian Schreiber, who's been playing more of a left back, he took one off the post, earned the penalty kick, finished the penalty kick, and we're tied at ones. Nice job defensively as they'll find Schuler. Schuler and Schreiber were a fun combination. Schreiber a little bit longer than Schuler. Schreiber. Switch the point of attack, and it'll go out of bounds. A little bit too long and strong for Ackley. 29 minutes in. Want to say hello to another player that could play for either one of these teams, and Jacob Coggins, who I think is still winning titles in the over 40 group and probably could have helped Charlotte. A little bit surprised that he is not out there, or he could have helped the Carolina Railhawks. He could have played for either one. His business partner, Dustin Swinehart, is listed. I don't think I've seen him on the field yet. One down by Ackley. You see Como 1907 there in target score time. They score one. They're going to beat... The Rex and Red Dragons, Sneaky Fox and Zala FFF tied. Raleigh Rebels leading Duke. The Rebels, the, I was watching them in practice yesterday. They got a little something to prove. They got a few players that were kind of in and out, like on the fringe, maybe didn't play enough for North Carolina FC. That game will be a fascinating game. And, of course, the game against Duke. When you think about Darius Barnes, Charlotte FC going against John Kerr Jr., the Duke head coach. Uh, that one's going to go out of bounds. We're ten minutes remaining. We are tied at ones. And it's picked up by Platter. He's gone the distance. Platter, good toss over to Deleuze. Deleuze still got it. Deleuze. 
Drops it over to Schuler. Austin Deleuze, two years, my broadcast partner for North Carolina FC Games. For as I mentioned earlier, having a couple of beautiful babies, a boy and a girl. Here's Charlotte FC. They got a good chance. They're going to crank it. And that actually went off the back of Larrabee. So Larrabee, who had a goal, ostensibly denied a goal that time, accidentally as cranking it was Luke Williams. Here's Deleuze. Deleuze and Capone Lowe. They're on the Mount Rushmore along with Nasby Abadawi. They are three of the four. A lot of debate about who the fourth is. Miller is one that could be considered. Connor Tobin, who's on the bench. T. Shipalani is one that could be considered. When you think about the four greatest to play for this franchise, but I feel like Lowe, Deleuze, and Abadawi are automatics. Taken away there by Elizondo and a sitter and how about North Carolina FC? Brian Ackley's made it 2-1. Alex Marino left in no man's land and Ackley with the finish. Brian Ackley, who continues to do great work with youth in North Carolina, always has. A little bit of tough touch there from Barnes, but he'll clean it up. And now North Carolina FC in front of their home crowd here with a 2-1 lead over Charlotte FC. This game means so much for multiple reasons. As I mentioned, North Carolina FC really have found a happy home in USL, so everything's good. They've also got the perennial power, North Carolina Courage. Charlotte got the MLS nod, and the club just kept charging on, and it's something to admire. Here's Elizondo. Elizondo taken down, and he'll earn the free kick. North Carolina FC has taken the lead. There's Dewan Bader along with Henry Gutierrez. Rick King also on the bench for North Carolina FC. Still waiting to see a run from Corey Alenio. Saw him at the NCFC Youth Golf Tournament, and he looks great. Charlotte FC knocking on the door, and oh, my, they missed it. As close to a sitter as you're going to find, but kind of falling away from it was Larrabee, who's already got one. Was looking for the second to tie it. Does earn a corner kick. So clearly it was deflected away, so he didn't miss it. It was deflected. So fair play to Larrabee. As it's headed back in, Platter's there, and Platter smartly lets it go out of bounds. Nick Platter still got it. <laughs> it is so fun to see the big deep breath so from Platter to truly tell the story of TST. A lot of veterans mixed in with youngsters and some of these guys have not played in quite some time. Dusting off the gloves in Nick Platter's case. Almost out of bounds. There's Elizondo, and it'll come back to Charlotte FC. Elizondo, he definitely looks like he's still got it. He has played for the name Railhawk Sitter, and it's 3-1 T. Shippelani. How about North Carolina FC? Three unanswered, and they lead it 3-1. T. Shippelani with the third goal. And on field three, it's an NCFC goal in the 34th minute. He's in the discussion on that Mount Rushmore. Maybe he'll earn it by a big-time run here in the TST. <laughs> Although it... He'll probably admit afterwards he's not in for big-time runs. It's been a few years. Shipolani also working with youth. There's Shipolani running it down. Shipolani had an idea to get it to Elizondo, but just mishit it. Schreiber. Ackley and Shipolani with the goals. Deflected there by Schreiber, who's been really good defensively. So clearly Dwan Bader knew what he was doing, putting Schreiber back there. A lot of attacking players, and Elizondo takes a crank. Elizondo was not afraid to do that when he played for the Railhawks. He and T. Shipolani were not afraid to put their head down and charge. It was interesting seeing that exchange earlier with Elizondo and Deleuze when Deleuze was basically saying, play it to me, and he finally did. That looked very familiar to me. 
3-1 as North Carolina FC answers the call down 1-0 with three here. Nazi Abadawi, what a great trap, Miller time. And how about North Carolina FC with a 4-1 lead. Nazmi Abadawi, what a trap, chesting it down and drops it on a platter for the Miller time call. And Nazmi Abadawi, and, you know, basically Stephen Miller saying, hang on on putting T. Shiplani into that Mount Rushmore. I've got something to say about it indeed. And it may be decided. Deleuze is on it already, and here he's got the ball. Minute 37, Deleuze will play it back over. Ackley, Ackley's got one. I thought he was going to maybe take a shot. Decides to make an extra pass. Nasby Abadawi with a big-time assist, though, to Miller. Tremendous job holding it up and dropping it off to Miller. Miller, as I mentioned, in the Colgate Hall of Fame, and he also has dabbled in broadcasting. He's pretty good. Like to lose, but he liked to lose, and Abadawi and all these former Railhawks slash North Carolina FC players have big time jobs now in the area. They have made it home, which is a really key part of the foundation of this team, North Carolina FC. Played in front, Miller, and Miller was ready to turn on it and get the brace. North Carolina FC with four unanswered. And have put themselves in a pretty good position. Austin Deleuze telling me yesterday he wasn't totally sure what to expect. They played one of the teams from Connecticut, and he said they got run. Just absolutely smoked, so he wasn't sure. There's Deleuze hustling back. What a brilliant header to platter. Man still got it. He is like Capono Lowe, who plays it over to him. The Ponce de Leon's of the team. Ageless wonders. And oh, yeah, a back heel count it 5 1. And how about North Carolina FC? Nazmi Abadawi's made it 5 1. Clinical in the second half for the team in orange. One, two, three, four, five. Abadawi heads over to the bench. Abadawi with an assist on the fourth goal, and he finishes it on the fifth and Nasby Abadawi I will tell you and Hannah our producer director if I had a dollar for every time I said Nasby Abadawi's team I would be at your level of income very high as he is a superstar player <laughs> Charlotte FC running straight downhill Couple touches, trying to pull one back, and they do. Well done. There is no quit, and with the target score, that is brilliant right there by Charlotte FC. As you know, they have it in them to stay in this game, and Charlotte FC has pulled one back. It's 5-2. And if they can pull one more back before we go to the target score, that would be massive as they got something to say, and they are not going to just run out of here. They got some big-time talent on this team. Clearly, North Carolina FC had some joy with five in a row, but Charlotte FC can steal that joy. Let's see if they can get one more before we get to the target score time, which would be six. They'll have a chance, a little bit of push. That'll be a foul on Ackley. Ackley is out there with Palacio, Schuler's out there, Ibiaga's out there, Lowe's out there, Deleuze is out there, Platter's out there. 5-2. They might have a chance to get one here. Good ball played back. Read perfectly by the 44-year-old Capono Lowe. Kept alive. Remember, no offside, so you can be wherever you want, which is brilliant. All of the rules set up by TST, I think it's hard to argue with. They're just fantastic, including the target score, which has added so much extra layers to these games. Austin Deleuze will take it back. Deleuze will square it. And here we go. The target is set at six. Five goals for North Carolina FC all coming in the second half. All coming 
by notable names for this franchise and the franchise's history. And the target score is six. We'll step aside real quick. Well, we'll tell you the rules first. Target score is set. It's the leading team score plus one. The first two six wins the game. So North Carolina FC needs one. And for those of you a little bit short on your math skills, Charlotte needs four. And here's the deal. They play five minutes. If neither, if they can't get to this six, they will take a player off. And another five minutes, and we've already seen it get down to 5v5. We were kind of hoping with Team Dempsey that Chris Wondolowski, who was forced into playing goalkeeper, would get to 1v1, and he would steal the show. He ended up stealing the show anyway with big-time saves and three goals as we talk about all the stories on the day. This is a fun one for me as the longtime voice of North Carolina FC and then so many connections to the Charlotte FC team. Miller's got a goal. Shriver's got a goal. shipalani has got a goal. Abadawi's got a goal. Ackley's got a goal. So all we need is Capono Lowe and Austin Deleuze to get a goal. And we pretty much checked all the boxes for North Carolina FC. <laughs> Look at Chipolani's. Still pretty pumped up. Let's see who the seven are that want to start these first five minutes. Looks like Austin Deleuze is not going to be one of them as he's sitting over on the bench. It's Henry Gutierrez in the gray shirt. That's Dewan Bader in the black shirt. I want to thank Ann Hanna and our amazing crew here, especially our camera operators, for getting those looks. We are a little off on Mr. Tembin, but he was over there. He's very much invested in this game as he played at Georgetown, and this Charlotte team features a couple former Georgetown stars. John Mugar, who is one of the founders, was front and center as the North Carolina FC team came walking in as he was there to greet them. I was there, too. It was pretty cool, having known these guys going all the way back to 2007. This whole tournament, the TST, is beyond cool. Target score is six. North Carolina FC, can they score one quickly for one more? You know how about it. Miller! And just missing. It was deflected. It'll be a corner kick. Elizondo will take it. Really close to a little bit of Miller time. Corner kick coming. Sent across. And it's going to go out of bounds. It'll come back to Charlotte FC. Field three, this is my fourth game being with you on the YouTube channel for TST, and thanks for coming along for the ride. I'll take a little break and then bring you four games over on field four, right down to a game that starts at 10 o'clock. And I'm telling you, I, there's no place I'd rather be than right here with you. Charlotte FC knocked out of bounds. If Charlotte FC can get one, they can start feeling it a little bit, put a little pressure here. As you got to believe, North Carolina FC knows what it means to get this three points against Charlotte FC for many of the reasons I've discussed during these first 40 minutes. There's Shriver back over to Smith. Smith in traffic. They'll lose it to Charlotte FC. Charlotte FC putting the clamps down. They'll take a shot from distance, and Platter has the near post covered. But it will be a corner kick, corner kick, Charlotte FC. So Charlotte FC on the ball. Spencer Wadsworth waiting to take the corner. He'll be, nope, they already got a whistle. They're looking to find Brundo. Brundo looking for an explanation as North Carolina FC has it back. Shriver's been good. They drop it over. Looking for the winner right there to Ackley. Elizondo wanted it back at the top of the goal box. Ibiaga, he's been clean. Ackley looking for the whistle, and he'll get it. So Ackley defended there by Rafael Fagundo. 
And a score wins it. It goes off the backside of Barnes. Nifty little pass forward by Brundo. And Brundo will find Luke Williams. Luke Williams. Ackley. Elizondo. Luke Williams. Barnes, Brundo, rain starting to come down again. Nick Platter, he's got to be like, okay, I was good for 40, but I don't know about all this as I think we're getting pretty close to them going down to 6v6. There was rain, then there was sun, and now there's rain again. Smith. Elizondo is determined to get one. He might need to make one extra pass, dare I say. As he's trying to end it from way downtown, trying to get one by Marino. Charlotte FC will take anything. We are definitely getting close to the switch it's still 7v7 as Abadawi with no offside was cherry picking hard to blame him you already see it saw him with the nifty back heel go here's Elizondo is he gonna shoot it again Elizondo Elizondo there is not a shot that he will not take he's a little bit like Steph Curry although it doesn't quite shoot like Steph Curry Big time talent, though, looks pretty fit out there. This one will go out of bounds. Good job by Capono Lowe. He's still got it. We'll try to keep an eye on what we think will be. Yep, we think now they'll take a player off. Yeah, they will. So now we go to 6v6, five minutes in. And still 5-2, so... It's 6v6, T. Shipolani sitting down. He scored one. There's Austin Deleuze, middle of the screen. Capono Lowe, the left-footed Thunder, scored the first ever goal for this franchise back in 2007, then named the Carolina Railhawks. Here's Smith, Schuler, Schuler. Now over to Elizondo. Elizondo, is he going to shoot? Elizondo, he does! And he just misses. He is determined to get that winner. Speaking of that, how cool would it be to be the person that scores the winner to win a million dollars as the winner of the TST, the team collectively will share a pool of a million bucks. Some teams like Hoosier Army have already dedicated X amount to go to one of the foundations with the Indiana University, which is pretty cool. And other teams have already declared similar situations as well. Action. Elizondo. Yeah, they got to close on him because he is not afraid to shoot from way downtown. North Carolina FC just needs one more. They had five unanswered before Charlotte pulled one back. Here it is! And a big time save by Marino. Spilled to Schuler. Schuler keeps it. Elizondo wanted it, didn't get it. Now he does. Elizondo. It's got Smith coming in support. Smith's going to crank it, but right to Marino. So Charlotte FC will build it out of the back. Capono low knocks it out of bounds. Man, he looks like he's still got it. Are you kidding me? Capono low at 44 years young and picked up there by Platter. Capono low also has a ton of kids, five or six of them. Great family, beautiful family. Here's Shriver. Shriver goes off the back of Charlotte FC as that was Benjamin Raymond. And there's Shriver. It's going to come all the way back to Platter. Platter gets the nod and has gone the distance. Ibiaga. Ibiaga will touch it forward. And a little push from behind on Ackley. Ackley wanted the call, doesn't get it. 
McKinde. Just a quick little cup of coffee, but enough to earn the nod. And of course, he's got those Wolfpack ties, which doesn't hurt. Platter gets a little bit too cute and almost gets in trouble there, but does well to get it back. Nick Platter, really good guy. Ibiaga. Looking for Ackley. Charlotte FC will roll it out. Player coach Barnes. They'll switch it. Down near the end line, drop back. Good little touch back again. And that's gonna go out of bounds. Schuler, Ibiaga, Ibiaga back over to Shipolani. Shipolani squares it, knocked away. It'll come all the way back to Platter. Platter, looking for Nasby Abadawi, who's got an assist and a goal in this game. May have another assist. Iviago with the kick in. Quick defense from Charlotte FC. We're getting pretty close to going to 5v5 here with the target score of six. It'll be a corner kick earned by Schuler and North Carolina FC. We are underway with second half action between Raleigh Rebels and Duke Devin. McKinde. A little bit surprised that Schuler didn't fire that one into the box as he went all the way back to McKinde, almost at midfield. Abadawi had it for a moment, lost it. Charlotte FC, they just need one. They may get it here, and they do. Indeed, it is still a ball game here as it's finished by Jimmy Nealis. Jimmy Nealis gets the third goal of the game for Charlotte FC, and indeed, this one could go a little while here. With the score 5-3, the target score of six. One of these teams has to get to six to get the winner. winner. And Austin Deleuze looks like he's still got that fight, that fight to get back in there, as it now looks like they're going to go to 5v5, right on cue. So we're down to 5v5. With six still the target score, Charlotte FC has scored the only goal in target score time. But they need three more to win it. North Carolina FC just needs one. And running downhill was Steven Miller. So Miller is out there now with Smith and Elizondo. Platter. And the fourth player is Capono Lowe. How about that? Oh, Capono Lowe to win it. Capono Lowe just missed it that was not any thunder on that shot but it was that very deft left foot for Capono low and it'll be a corner kick it's now 5v5 with the target score at six that was a better ball from Elizondo Capono low so close to send it North Carolina FC the win Group H action with four North Carolina teams. These two plus Duke and the Raleigh Rebels. See the scores on the bottom. The HBCU team based out of Greensboro with the win over the U.S. women. Team Dempsey, the Wando Show. Chris Wondolowski with three goals and a star appearance in goal. Chad Ochoa-Sinkles team losing the hashtag United 4-3. Conrad and Beasley getting a win. Well done by Ibiaga, headed neatly back to Platter. I think Austin Deleuze just snuck on here in this 5v5 situation. Ibiaga has pushed forward. 
He's got Ackley. Ackley's been good. Elizondo. Elizondo, he's got to make that pass. Ackley was wide open. Elizondo. Elizondo's going to shoot it, I think. He does. Oh, my. Goes off the crossbar and down. And Elizondo is determined to get the winner, but he's got to be careful. And there, that could be a card here. It will be a yellow, I believe, on Ibiaga. Ibiaga and Barnes, the two Duke stalwarts. How about that? What a great sign. Fair play. Everything about this TSC is just spectacular, including the fact that a team is going to walk out of here on Sunday with a million bucks. Corner kick coming for Charlotte FC. I'll tell you what, they will make the hometown crowd really tense up. If they can make it 5-4, they got a chance to do it just a little bit out of the reach of the on-running Spencer Wadsworth. Shriver, who scored from the penalty spot, he earned the penalty and then hammered it home. Smith will lose it. Smith out there with Shriver. Shriver looks exactly the same as when he played for the Railhawks. So does this man here, Deleuze. Deleuze with his right foot headed down and just missed right there. Trying to find it was Schuler Gives the thumbs up to Austin Deleuze. And Deleuze sending a message to me as I always talked about how great his left foot was. That was the pass with his right foot. It was on the dot. His dad, Tony, would give me a little poke when I would only mention his left foot. So Austin Deleuze with his right foot, a pretty good pass. Out of bounds again. It'll come back to Platter. There's more scores up on top of your YouTube screen here for TSC coverage. The first of what we hope is many TST following the motto of TBT led by their leaders. And just over the top. The TBT with the co-founders Dan Frio and John Mugar, incredible. And then Aleko Escanarin with the TSC. We're down to four. It's the first time we've seen that here on field three. We've seen 5v5, but we've not yet seen 4v4. And we'll go all the way to 1v1 if that's what it takes. That'll be wild. I mean, you think about it, get to 1v1, then you really don't know. North Carolina FC. Is there enough gas in the tank here to get that target score of six? A little bit of pressure there from Abadawi. Abadawi out there with Miller. Smith and Platter, those are the four for North Carolina FC. Miller. Miller. Miller will drop it and for the win, North Carolina FC. How about North Carolina FC and how about Nasby Abadawi? Miller to Abadawi and North Carolina FC gets the win. A 6-3 final. Nasby Abadawi with a couple goals and some assists. A brilliant performance. Capono Lowe was great. Austin Deleuze was great. Brian Shriver was great. T.C. Pilani got a goal. Ibiaga was big time. And, of course, Mr. Barnes and Charlotte FC also representing Charlotte FC in fine order. But the story of the game, Nasby Abadawi with a couple goals, a big-time assist, and your final score in this special derby as part of the TST. How about North Carolina FC? They get the win 6-3 over Charlotte FC.
see you tomorrow.